Hello. Many imaging modalities are utilized to uh, evaluate patients with suspected COVID-19. And we will be talking about lung ultrasound. We will be talking about imaging and findings. And I will be demonstrating through the use of a BodyWorks EVE simulator. I'm John Shields. I'm a nurse anesthetist and faculty at Middle Tennessee School of Anesthesia. As well, I'm on staff at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. Diagnosis and complications of COVID-19, we're all becoming very familiar with. Um, pretty much diagnosis is now limited to uh, the RT-PCR, which is uh, supposedly the definitive diagnosis. Um, it's very specific, but it has a pretty low sensitivity or relatively low sensitivity, about 60 to 70 percent. So you could have a very large number of false negatives. Uh, other lab findings include lymphopenia, increased PTT, and increased lactate hydrogenase. The radiologic exams available to us um, in order of uh, specificity and sensitivity are CT, lung ultrasound, and chest X-ray. However, um, I believe that you shouldn't probably be using any of these in and of itself. You should be using it in addition to uh, whatever else you have as far as, as assessment goes. Um, chest X-ray is pretty low way down there because of all the other rule outs. It's around 18% or so. And as we all know, the complications include ARDS. Uh, acute cardiac injury is becoming something that's talked about a lot as well. Uh, secondary infections, uh, sepsis, and multi-organ failure. Some of the imaging strategies with lung ultrasound. Um, there are four chest areas per hemithorax for a complete eight zone lung scan. Some go as uh, high as 12 and 16, include, which include the, the posterior uh, regions of the chest. Um, areas one and two, as you can kind of see here, uh, are the upper and lower anterior chest areas. Three and four are the upper lateral and basal lateral chest areas. And we'll be talking about each one of these areas as we talk about some of the findings with COVID-19. The parasternal line is the border for areas one and two. And of course, when you get into the sternum, you start to have a lot, a lot of dropout. The anterior axillary line is the border between areas one, three, and two and four. This is the uh, pretty much the upper and the lower regions. And then the posterior axillary line marks the border for areas three and four in the beginning of the posterior chest. So in, in looking at these different regions, it's it's kind of uh, good to know because we'll be talking about these different regions as we go over some of the findings and some of the actual ultrasound scans that you would find. So not to go too much into the, the basics of ultrasound, but just for some of those that are naive, lung ultrasound relies not only on the direct visualization, but also interpretation of lung artifacts. Uh, air, of course, does not reflect very well, but you get some, some interesting artifacts which kind of tell you a lot about what's going on. Typically, you have some very normal findings such as A-lines, uh, and you also have sliding of, along the visceral and parietal pleura. Uh, this is where your transducer is going to be. Uh, this is a curvy curvy linear transducer, of course. Um, some of the physical findings that you can actually see um, along with this, the sliding phenomenon is pleural diffusion, a very anechoic region uh, in the chest. You also see some consolidation as the, the alveoli become filled with fluid, uh, blood or whatever, you get some consolidation or pneumonia, which uh, gives it more of a, an, an organ type appearance. And also pulmonary edema and interstitial disease can be evaluated, but typically through uh, things like, like B lines. Curvilinear is considered the best all around probe, but the phased array is also used, especially from the, some of us that use a lot of, of, of scanning for cardiac. Um, a comprehensive POCUS uh, scan can actually be done in five minutes uh, using this technique, using the, the four, to, uh, four zones on each side, eight to 16, whoever you, you read. Um, and typically you have better diagnostic capabilities with, with lung ultrasound than, than physical exam and chest x-ray combined. So as you can see here, um, as the lung moves, you get sliding uh, right along the, the pleural line here. Um, the, the different A lines are just the normal reverberations as the ultrasound uh, kind of bounces along down through the alveoli and then the, the returning signal is converted from, from sound waves back into energy and an image. Then you can also see some drop out here from this rib shadow, uh, which is pretty standard. 
Lung ultrasound in the diagnosis of acute respiratory failure has been talked about a lot with Lichtenstein and his colleagues in, in chest about 12 years ago. Lung ultrasound has been around actually since about 1993, 1994, uh, especially the, the, in the emergency department. Um, but you're evaluating four basic assessments, which are the lung artifacts we talked about, the A and B lines, uh, sliding, which is giving you a good idea about pneumothorax and some other issues, and pleural effusion, which is basically an anechoic region in the subphrenic area right above the diaphragm, which we'll show you and demonstrate in a moment. Blue protocol was talked about um, in, in this chest article, and you're talking about first evaluating lung sliding, then you're, if they're present or absent, you go down a different pathway of looking at A and B lines, ruling out pneumonia, and you can even go into PE using some other uh, point of care ultrasound techniques. So uh, let's talk just a little bit about B lines. B lines uh, basically are the alveoli that are filled with fluid or some type of, of, uh, of, of interstitial disease. And typically, you, in this patient with congestive heart failure, you can see you've got a lot of B lines, fluid filled alveoli. Uh, you've got a plural line here that you do have some sliding, and you've got your rib shadow. Uh, in contrast, you have pneumothorax here uh, on your right. You can see some sliding over here right around this lung point, uh, but you have no sliding over here, which tells you that you actually aren't really moving a lot of that lung. You do have some A lines here from the normal reverberation from the transducer, which is on the chest wall. Um, if you're looking at pneumothorax and you're trying to evaluate that along with, with your, your standard 2D scanning uh, or, or B mode, you can also use M mode, which is uh, where you basically put the transducer on the chest wall and you're getting a slice through this 2D image here. So what you've got is you've got the, the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura. You've got the pleural line here and you've got an ocean effect because uh, you basically have no real movement um, in, in the in the uh, parietal pleura, but across the pleural line in, in the visceral pleura, you do have lung movement. You can kind of see the lung going up and down. So you have an ocean effect, which is pretty much stable uh, a visual, and then you've got a sandy beach, which is rather speckled, and you've got some A-lines interspersed in there. Now, as opposed to uh, normal lung, pneumothorax, you've got uh, the typical parietal pleural, the ocean, as you can see, just like you do in normal lung, but you have barcode instead of sandy beach because nothing's really moving. It's all very stable, very consistent pattern. So if you're looking at normal lung uh, versus consolidation, you can see on the left you've got the typical pattern. You've got sliding, you've got nice A lines, you've got the rib dropout, the rib shadows. And over here on the right, you've got some consolidation. Um, this is where your curvilinear transducer is. This is where your plural line is. This is where you've got some nice sliding. But at the same time, you've got, uh, instead of just the usual uh, non-reflective pattern with, with A lines, you've got consolidation. So the, the lung is starting to look a little bit more like an organ. Side of pneumonia, there's a lot of different things that you've got to rule out, uh, bilateral versus unilateral, etc. Then if you're looking at uh, consolidation versus the fusion, uh, normal lung, you've got, um, you, this is actually in the right basal lateral or the right upper quadrant imaging. You've got the probe way down um, in, in the right lateral base position. So you've got lung here, you've got diaphragm and you've got liver. And typically you're gonna have uh, the image, um, the sound wave is gonna bounce off the diaphragm into the liver into the lung, which is not gonna reflect anything. And then the mirror is gonna have some image, you're gonna have some mirror artifact of the liver that's gonna go transmit back up to the transducer. And you're gonna get this mirror artifact. If you have a pleural effusion, typically you've got uh, the diaphragm, which you can't see too well here, but you've got this anechoic region here uh, of fusion and you've got the liver here, diaphragm, and you have no mirror artifact because this is filled with fluid. So it's really not going to bounce the, your liver image back up to your, your, your probe. So you've got a fusion, you've got consolidation, and then you've got a uh, normal lung here where you've got a mirror artifact. So let's talk a little bit about COVID-19 clinical presentation, um, nonspecific or even asymptomatic presentation in, in a lot of people. Uh, fever is probably the most common symptom, uh, dry cough, uh, fatigue, sputum, shortness of breath. There's a lot of other 
um, little um, symptoms that uh, are, are much less common, but I'm not going to discuss anything that is less than 15%. Uh, unfortunately, the chest x-ray is very nonspecific. Um, this is your typical COVID-19 chest x-ray, and this looks a lot like another 10 or 12 presentations. Um, and you, But typically, you have an atypical or organizing pneumonia with bilateral peripheral basal distribution with extensive bilateral ground, ground glass opacities, especially uh, showing up on, on CT. So if you're looking at CT versus ultrasound, um, and if you're working in a busy busy ER, or if you don't really have access to CT, or if you just are swamped like a lot of, of places are right now, CT um, is of course much better than ultrasound, but ultrasound, especially point of care ultrasound, is, is very, very convenient, and you can often make uh, in combination with um, a physical exam and presentation a good diagnosis. But CT, you're gonna have thick and pleura, uh, ground glass opacity, or the, the crazy paved road, you're going to have pulmonary infiltrating shadow, subplural and airspace consolidation, and a host of other uh, things that show up on CT, which again are not as specific as we'd, we'd like. Um, and on ultrasound, you have thickening of the plural lines with plural line irregularity and subplural consolidation, which we'll see in a moment. Uh, multiple B lines um, in, a, in a variety of patterns and often very confluent with skip lines where you're, you're kind of skipping a lot. Rare pleural effusions, you just don't see that a lot with, with COVID-19. And you're going to have consolidations in a variety of patterns, including multifocal, small, non-translobar, and translobar with occasional mobile, mobile uh, air bronchograms, which we'll see momentarily. So this is a normal scan. You've got the, in, in a patient that uh, is the first case that we'll discuss over here, as you can see in the right panel, uh, their, their room air sats, uh, 98%, good blood pressure, uh, slightly febrile, but uh, you got a nice uh, thin pleural line. You've got nice A lines. There's no B lines, no consolidation. This is an upper anterior scan. So this is in, in region one of the different regions and areas that we talked about. Moving along to a different patient. This is a patient that is presenting with a room air sat of 94%. Uh, your blood pressure is normal, but you do have a little bit of a temp, 100.2 with some breathlessness. Uh, and what you can notice from this upper anterior scan, which is in region one, you get a, a little bit of a, of a thickened and irregular pleural line here with an increased number of B lines. Um, and you have areas where you, you have uh, no A lines at all. You do have some A lines in here, but in general, you have some regions over here and over here that don't really have a lot of A lines. So this is a patient that you're getting a little bit suspicious for this presentation. This is the same patient. This is the right basal lateral. Uh, again, you've got this irregular uh, thickened pleural line. You've got uh, some more B lines coming in here. Again, you don't have that many B lines, but you've got some, you're dropping your A lines out, but you do have some A lines. So it's not really definitive, especially with, you, with this rib shadowing that you've got over here. And in this patient, you're starting to get pretty hot. You're about 101.3 degrees, 90% on your room air sat, a little faster respiratory rate, and now you're getting periods of agitation and a persistent dry cough. Your pleural lines become even more thickened, a little bit more irregular. It's very diffused and thick. You've got a complete absence of, of A lines now. It's just a preponderance of, of B lines, which are visible throughout all lung zones, all, all 8 to 16. And you also have a, a little bit of consolidation, which we'll see momentarily in, in the basis. Again, this is a patient that's a little bit further along, and you're really starting to get suspicious for, for, for some type of, of uh, COVID-19 presentation. This is a, the same patient. You've got a, a right basal lateral uh, scan. You've got the pleural line here with some rib, shad rib shadowing with a lot more B lines. Again, you're starting to see everywhere you look, you're starting to see a lot of B lines. And this is a bilateral thing. It's not just unilateral. And this is the right base or around the right upper quadrant. I really like this view because it gives me a nice view for several things, including uh, to rule out an infusion. But in this particular patient, you've got uh, a liver here. You've got the lung. You've got a lot of B lines here. You, can, you can't see the diaphragm very much because the B lines are so thick and confluent. You've got a little bit of a consolidation here. It's probably two and a half centimeters or so uh, measuring caudal to cephalad. 
So you're starting to really become suspicious with the thick and plural line, with consolidations, with no effusion uh, for some type of COVID-19 patient. And in this patient, you've come to the point where you're having to intubate. Your SAT's very, very low. Uh, blood pressure's down. You're, you're getting uh, tachycardic. To, you know, you're, you're intubated in 102 degrees. Um, you got a lot of sputum. You're having rigors. You're having uh, all sorts of pulmonary issues. The upper anterior scanner in region one, you can kind of, this is where your, your ultrasound probe's going to be. Very thick pleural line. Um, you got the rib shadow, and between the rib shadows, you've got just nothing but B lines, just very hazy. Uh, if, if you have an older uh, television, you, you've got some type of static interference with it. This is the, in the right basal region, uh, probably around uh, area four. Again, there's the pleural line. You also happen to have some consolidation. Um, and in this consolidation, it's a very large area of consolidation. Uh, you're surrounded by B lines. Um, you're, you're pretty much have static bronchograms, which you've got. Not a lot of stuff is coming in and out of there. It's just some, some nasty, nasty, junky stuff. And this is in the bases. This is pretty much what you're going to see. And this is in the right base, uh, around the right upper quadrant. Um, again, the confluence of, of B lines, the pleural line is very thick, and you're getting some subpleural consolidation, similar to what you would see uh, on a CT scan in, in patients with, with COVID-19. So scanning from the left anterior chest down toward the spleen, you see a lot of B lines, you see the rib shadows, you see a thick and pleural line. Uh, you make your way down to the subphrenic region, to the diaphragm, you see uh, spleen, you don't see an effusion there, but you see a lot of B lines. Then if you move up um, uh, cephalad toward the right anterior chest, you see the same B lines, very thick pleural uh, lining there. And as well, you can start to see a little bit of consolidation here around the, the lateral uh, base. And then when you get down to the right upper quadrant, you see that, that subcostal uh, consolidation there. So the conundrum here, obviously, is that there's a lot of other rule outs that you have to go through in the patient with COVID-19, uh, given the presentation, bowel pneumonia, influenza, CMV, SARS, bacterial pneumonia, pulmonary edema, interstitial lung disease, and then uh, COVID-19. So the initial evaluation occurs where you have to do a chest x-ray, lung ultrasound, maybe a trip to the CT scan if you think it would affect the management, maybe even no imaging at all, depending on what you find. So it's a very difficult um, pathway to get. So a lot of what the decision making comes down to is what you're comfortable with and what you're going to find with ultrasound. So these are some reference I've got. You, if you like to get a little bit of a more practical approach to lung ultrasound, Miller's got a very nice paper here. Uh, Lichtenstein and uh, Mazer uh, talked about the uh, blue protocol and diagnosis of acute respiratory failure. And Volpicelli and his group had a very nice uh, treatise on the evidence-based recommendations for, for point of care ultrasound. Thank you very much.